keeps the proviso. The thing that, that bugs me is, what is it actually saying though? Why have you given that a five? Oh, it was a great trip, it was a wonderful, I had a great cup of coffee. Can five star, like to somebody else, that, must have, that could have been the most horrible thing in the world. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world. Discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, everybody. It's Laura here with the Midlife Traveler podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are sharing about Scotland through the voice, the mind, and the opinions of a Scotsman named James. Today's episode, I I think, is really, really interesting as a person who travels and who explores the world, you know, both from an independent traveler perspective, but also from a tourist perspective. You know, sometimes I do my own trips, and sometimes I just join tours. And James is a person that has... He actually has an entirely different career outside of tourism, but on and off, he's worked as a tour guide in Scotland for the past 10 years. And over that time, he has seen a lot of change. He's seen a lot of change in the type of travelers, the type of tours that people requesting, and in particular, the impact of the internet in the age of travel. So you're going to hear in James's voice about how touring and traveling has changed over the years as more and more people discover Scotland, you know, a lot online, particularly in the age of online review services like TripAdvisor, and how that can lead to this uh, monkey see, monkey do mentality among tourists So the part of the conversation that you don't hear recorded that happened right before he speaks, we were talking about the tourist photo mentality and how my belief that a lot of people, we just show up and we take the same damn photo of the same damn place from the same damn perspective. And in part, we do that because we see these things online, 10 great things to do here, five must sees. And so we all show up with that checklist of of things that we want to photograph, right? We want to prove we saw those 10 things, we did those five things. So we were talking about how tourists kind of all hoard together at sites that they've learned about and take the same photo. And then he shared some stories as a tour guide perspective, which I had read about online, the fairy pools are on the Isle of Skye. And I was actually admittedly a bit sad that the length of time I was in Scotland did not allow me to go up into the Isle of Skye or, you know, the Island Highland region. But James shared kind of a secret, which is how the fairy pools became so famous and popular, basically on the combination of a made-up story from the guides and the age of internet sharing, you know, coming into collision. So... This recording, like others, it's also a field recording. This one was taken while we were walking at a place called Lindisfarne. So the background noise that you're going to pick up is crunching of gravel. It's chirping of birds. And, you know, maybe there is an occasional car as we cross the street in one place. But the background noise in this is much more pleasant than some of the other recordings I've had while driving. So that's it. I'm going to let you listen to James talk about tourism changes over the years in Scotland and the age of the internet. I hope you enjoy. I think it's a really interesting one. People p- take pictures of what you photograph. They don't know why they're doing it. Yeah. Me and Danny put this to the test once on Sky because Danny said the same thing. He's like, because we were being followed. We, we, were, we were both on the same tour. I was driving, Danny was learning, so he was doing a bit of guiding. And Danny said, that car's following us, like, everywhere we go. So I just started pulling into nothing, and they would, they were stopped. So me and Danny were talking about this, saying, that's a bit weird, eh? And he's like, ach, ach, monkey see, monkey do. So I put this to the test, and we went down, we're at the river at Slagachan, and there was a big rock, and I got a stone and another stone, and I'd done that on the rock. 
When we came back, you made a carn. Yeah, and when we came back from the, the, the forty minute walk, there was about fifty of them. <laughs> so you know, it's sort of like, well, I don't know, but I'll do it as well because, and I tend to find that this is happening a lot more. Um, when I first started touring back 2006, 2007, people had a clear idea why they were coming here. I would ask people when we were going to Isle of Skye, so why have you booked your trip? Oh, because the Coolin Mountains are so blah, blah, blah. Or I've heard of this or, you know. But they had a purpose to be here. And I'm finding that, that p people like yourselves are, are very, very the minority now because most people are here because the answer is sort of trip advisor. I'm here because that's, this is where people are coming. That, that gets, a, it gets a bit harder because then I'm trying to, trying to meet an, an expectation that even the person doesn't understand it. Keep supervisor, the thing that, that bugs me is, what is it actually saying though? Right, so five star review for the three day Isle of Skye but the person's, oh, the only thing they're talking about is how nice that coffee was at that terrible commercial place. So what ends, why have you given that a five? Oh, it was a great trip, it was a wonderful, I had a great cup of coffee. Can five star, like to somebody else, that must have, that could have been the most horrible thing in the world. We were in the far north and went to the stupid coffee house, why don't we? And it is managing, just now, managing expectations is very difficult because I'm hearing this a lot on the five day tour. We get up to Akmelvik Bay, Totally remote beach in the middle of nowhere. Daylight today, there for two minutes. And um, what's the alternative? Sorry, where's the where's the coffee? Where's the where, where can I get? Where's what's the alternative? I don't like beaches. <laughs> okay, so can I ask? You know the tour that you chose. It's called the far remote north coast. Why did you expect there to be Costa Coffees up here? Or well, isn't there? And it's like we can't have written any more on, on the information. So this is getting harder because people are unsure. They've not researched why they're coming. And for many travellers, if Scotland's the first time, it's like, yeah, but wherever, where, wherever else I travel, there's always... And I'm like, but the appeal, the reason that people come to Scotland is that there's not. So that's getting difficult. And the more that we try to... The more that we try to meet those customers' expectation for having all the services and the coffee houses then the more we remove the reason that people were coming here in the first place. When we first started doing a tour and it wasn't up market, ten years ago it was just backpackers, budget touring, really staying in youth hostels, cooking together with the group all night. And we would take them to places like the fairy pools on the Isle of Skye. There has never been a place on the Isle of Skye that's existed called the fairy pools. We called it that as guides to just tell a fairy tale. And now people come and say, I want to go to the fairy pool. So we take them there, but we can't take them there anymore because it's so busy I can't park the bus. So all we can do is drop them off and say it's about a kilometre walk that way. And, when, and it's just hundreds of people not knowing why they're there because the fairy pools are not special. The reason that people wrote on the internet about the fairy pools was because they remember the story we told them there. That's what was special. So when we just send the customer there, they don't know what they're doing there. So thanks for listening to the Midlife Traveler podcast. If you're looking for any of the resources that were mentioned in today's episode, please go online to our website at amidlifetraveler.com. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, rate, and review us online and uh, just send us a note. Tell us what you think about the podcast. We would really appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>